Hey, welcome to our webinar today, AI Meets SEO from Robots to Rankings. Uh, we're glad that you joined us today. Uh, my name is Carl Willis, and with me is Jason Crabtree. Uh, together, we run uh, Remodeling Marketing Team and Agent Branding and Marketing. Uh, those two agencies focus on the insurance agency vertical and also in the home services, home remodeling verticals. And so that's kind of our specialization. So we hope today really just to inform you on how SEO is, is really beginning to evolve with AI, how you can leverage that and uh, give you some of the information you need to really thrive in this AI driven environment. So Jason, if you want to take it from here. Sure. So a lot, uh, a lot going on with AI and in, in the, uh, the world of marketing, um, it's probably the fastest growing tool there is. Uh, so really, we want to get into um, kind of today what we'll what we'll go over. Uh, just an overview of AI tools and uses, um, how AI is being used for marketing, how AI is being used for SEO specifically, um, AI for for content creation, and then we'll give you some case studies and examples and and walk you through. Here's what we've done. Here's what we've learned. Here's what uh, you could take away from from this session, and then we'll attempt to uh, uh, predict the future. Like, what do we what do we think AI and SEO are going to look like moving forward? So, I guess first, um, I have not used all of these tools, but um, Carl, what what do you think are the the probably the top AI tools for marketing. There's a lot of AI tools, but for marketing, what, what do you think are the main a ones? A lot of, lot of AI tools out there. And I think we really want to break those down into categories. Uh, for your general content creation, ChatGPT, Gemini, Jasper, those are going to be the primary tools people are going to use. And that's going to be to write your blog posts, your social media posts, uh, things of that nature. Now they they can be much more expansive than that, but that tends to be a, a very common usage point for that. Uh, for your image creation, it's going to be Leonardo, it's going to be Midjourney, and it's going to be Dolly. And then you have for research, it's going to be Perplexity AI. And we'll dive into these a little more as we go. But uh, what will help you really kind of get your mind around it is to categorize in those silos. So if you're you're wanting to create uh, written content, blog posts, articles, uh, things for your LinkedIn, your Facebook, you know, those types of things, then you're probably gonna wanna turn to Jasper, ChatGPT, or Gemini. Uh, if you're gonna be writing more lengthy content, Jasper, ChatGPT is probably gonna be preferable over Gemini. Interesting thing is even Perplexity can can write lengthy content, but you, you tend to find uh, those are the preferred tools. Um, on image creation, Dolly, Leonardo, or Midjourney. Midjourney right now seems to produce the, the best quality uh, images out of uh, any of the other image softwares. And so that's the one we, we currently recommend uh, if you're trying to get the most lifelike imagery. And then Perplexity is certainly your research engine uh, for the AI-driven environment right now. And, and I think... A lot of people are using perplexity to uh, to double check the work of uh, of, of other uh, generative programs like Chat and Gemini. So they gave me some stats. I want to see if this is legit, right? Exactly. Yeah. In fact, when we talk uh, uh, some of the workflow here in a few minutes, that's one of the things we'll talk about is how to use one to fact check the other. Yeah. Cool. So so those are the uh, kind of the the primary tools in the market. Just in general for marketing, you know, you can you can use it not specifically for SEO, um, but for your general marketing, you can use it to to better understand your audience. So if you're going to create content, you probably ought to have a uh, a, a mock up of who you want this content to target, and you can use AI to research. You can feed it a lot of information, um, a lot of data. And it can uh, it can get to know your target audience, know their trends, their interests, their online behavior, stuff like that. So you can use the AI for the the pre creation of content just by getting to know your audience, 
Um, you can also use that data to do uh, predictive analytics with AI. So it can identify sales opportunities by, by recognizing trends in your target audience. You can use it to personalize your content. So while you're doing your research, if you want to uh, uh, get a feel for people in this market, call it a hot water heater versus a water heater, or they, you know, they, they, uh, they may call it lobster versus lobster. So if you're going to customize or personalize content and AI can get to know your market, your audience, um, it can help you use terms that relate more uh, to that audience. Content creation, we're gonna talk a lot about that. That's gonna be the meat of this meeting. But um, in addition to some of the things that, that Carl mentioned earlier, blog posts, uh, social media content. You can do. Uh, um, you could do web page content. You could. You could create an ebook. Uh, we've done a lot um, with with AI, um, and and we'll we'll show you our tips and tricks and how we did it in just a second. Um, automating tasks. You can use it to schedule social media posts. You can you can use it to write emails for a targeted audience, and then you could also use it as a chat bot to have on your website. So you train it on your company's core values and policies. And then when a, a consumer has a question, your uh, chatbot AI can, can answer it like a real human would, um, knowing knowing a lot about your company. Anything on there, Carl, that I should elaborate on? Or is that kind of? You know, I, I think a couple things we want to get into on this is, is uh, if you can dream it, uh, it's worth testing with AI. Uh, what we are finding is uh, the more imaginative, imaginative, can't speak this morning, the more imaginative we get, uh, the more we're finding out that we're actually able to do with the AI. Um, so right now, that's been kind of the, the gold mine of, of uh, AI is uh, we've been testing a lot of new ideas just because uh, we've got clients that will come to us and say, hey, uh, can you train AI to do this? And so uh, it's allowed us to to put those ideas to the test. So the thing I, I would say is, uh, you know, whatever you're dreaming about, uh, could I get AI to do this? It's worth putting to the test. One of the things we're working on right now uh, is actually a, a Q&A AI system uh, that would do pre-screening uh, in a sales process uh, to where the AI would... Uh, do the pre-screening of the, the client or the customer uh, and based on those <laughs> answers, make recommendations. Uh, we've got a case study that uh, a counterpart of ours did uh, where they closed a $12,000 uh, insulation job on a house uh, using nothing but an AI interview. Um, and so we're kind of reverse engineering how they did that and, uh, you know, figuring out those tips and tricks and, uh, so if you can imagine it, it's it's worth testing in the AI environment. Awesome. And then uh, as as it goes, uh, people did imagine it for SEO. So there's a lot of different components to uh, to using AI in your SEO. Um, but I would say that the probably the biggest one is uh, is the customization and creation of content. It allows you to personalize things for exactly your market. And so instead of saying, this is how things are, you can say, this is how things are for you. Um, and it, it really makes a big difference as far as content and engagement, um, uh, user interface. Uh, it, it's, it's a game changer as far as uh, the ability to quickly create um, relevant content that, that relates to the audience. So, um, you can use it to improve the user experience. Like I said, uh, you can use it to develop strategies. So one one idea um, that we were we were looking at is uh, what um, what content of your competitor is trending. What did your competitor do that's working well, and how can we use AI to uh, to not duplicate but expand on what they're doing? So. Um, we're, we're, we're looking at topics that are trending in, in your vertical, uh, and then we could use AI to, uh, to create the things that consumers seem to demand. Um, 
you can use it for uh, SERP research and keyword analysis. So if you want to uh, take a look at what do uh, the people in your target audience tend to search and make sure that you're covering those topics, what kind of questions does your target market have and how can you best answer those that's specifically targeted at those guys? So AI is great for that. Um, you can also use it for technical SEO. So we use it to, uh, to scan the websites to see if there are any technical components that are missing. Like, oh, this page doesn't have the right schema, or we didn't have a meta description on this page, or this page has too many H1s. So we can quickly scan a page using AI to see what technical components, um, how quickly does the page load? You know, is that something that Google's going to ding us for? Uh, so we can use AI to scan for all of these technical components, and we can even use it to write code. Like, oh, this is a page about a certain geography, and we don't have a map embedded in here. You can use AI to create a, uh, a an embed code if you want to. It can write HTML if you tell it what you want it to do. Um, it will do a better job if you give it examples, but uh, that's all in the training, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, and then I think the biggest one for, for SEO, and this is what we're seeing massive, massive uh, engagement on, is the creation of content. doesn't mean they're doing it correctly. As a matter of fact, most of the people aren't doing it correctly. Um, but we're seeing people use AI to create content. We're seeing stuff go onto websites um, that probably shouldn't be there. Um, and then, you know, we, then people are coming to us saying, hey, I've, I've got, uh, uh, you know, 60 new pages of content on my website. And uh, I looked at, uh, at, at my uh, search console and half of my pages aren't getting indexed. What, why isn't Google finding these pages? Well, it's because the, the content on those pages isn't very valuable. You're, you're not giving your AI the right training and prompts to create this content. Just say something like, go write a blog about um, auto insurance or go write a blog about uh, roof repair. Uh, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't tell you who the target audience is. It doesn't tell you what city they're in. Um, what kind of conditions are there? What kind of roof are you talking about? Uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have enough information to create something that's valuable to the consumers. It's just kind of generic content that it scraped from the web and, and made some assumptions about and tried to deliver for you. So that kind of stuff, um, although there's massive amounts of content that are being pushed out to the web, um, Google's ignoring a lot of it because it's just not valuable. So keep in mind that when you're creating content, that it needs to be helpful and useful and authoritative. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the EAT criteria in a minute. But um, anything on this page, Carl, that, that you uh, have seen that we're doing that, <laughs> that, that I didn't mention? You know, I think uh, you, you hit the, the primary thing is laziness is going to get you killed. Um, so right now, uh, and I know, Jason, you're going to get into this here in a minute. Google is in the middle of a, a core update where they are going after poor quality AI generated content. Um, so if you think you're just going to get to chat GPT and say, write me a, a blog post on, uh, you know, kitchen remodeling or on uh, Medicare insurance, and that's going to do well, it's not. It's going to get killed. Um, so it's going to be important that you you put some effort, put some thought into how you, you create that content. But if you create that content appropriately, um, not only is it going to stick, but it's going to rank very quickly. And we'll show you some some case studies here in a few minutes of how, how we've been able to make that work. Also, uh, um, in that content, uh you probably should cite your sources if you want to get give uh give it a little more credibility because ai if not given the right prompts and training it will just guess at stuff and sometimes it'll make things up and so last thing you want to do is to push out a piece of content um and it has statistics in there 
and nobody can validate any of those statistics. You know, if, if it says 80% of people prefer this, but you can't source that, um, and it's just something that the AI made up, uh, that's probably worse than not publishing the content at all. Um, so anyway, enough about that. We'll, we'll, uh, talk more in a second. Um, so when we, when we, uh, drill down to AI for content creation, and this I think is probably the bulk of what people are going to learn from, learn from this is, is, uh, want to learn from this, um, just at a high level, Carl, can you tell us what does a, a generative pre-trained transformer do? What, what is that? Yeah. So at a high level, essentially what a GPT does is it takes, it's a, the, the term is a large language model. So it takes all of this data from the internet and it just compiles all that data and, and just learns from it. Um, and so think of it as, as a large library uh, that anything you would ever want to know is in that library. Yep. And based on he, the questions you asked. He ask had it halfway down his throat and it was all gummed up. Is going to determine well, he had it in his mouth and it was all the output that you get. So what what that does is that that generative pre-trained transformer, what it does is it takes all of that information and gives you a specific output based on the instructions you give it. So and then to piggyback on that, then then what is a custom GPT? So a custom GPT takes all of the data that you give it and and creates outputs based on your unique customized data. So essentially you are training it specifically on your own data, not on this overwhelming universe of data. So and then you can you can instruct that custom GPT to um, before you go out and look at that universe of data, look at the information that we gave you first and then apply the universe of data as as it uh, pertains to this. So you can train it on things like your company's core values. Like I think we have team members that still, if we said today, tell us our core values, they probably couldn't do it. Um, but we can train a GPT on our core values. So any answer that it gives us or any content that it that it spits out is going to follow those core values. Our, our company uh, goals, um, our, our target audience we already mentioned, but um, our geography, if we're targeting something hyper local, um, you may want to have some some knowledge of the of the local area. Does like does your town, uh, have little neighborhoods with names, you probably want your content writer to know those things. Like if you don't have a Chinatown, you don't want it to mention Chinatown, you know, um, those, those kind of things that you can train, uh, a custom GPT, um, to, to know more than just your, uh, uh, content about your vertical. Um, so then different types of content and Carl, you may, may, uh, think of some more, but, there's obviously the written content. That's what we've been talking about the most um, short form content. So we use uh, AI as a, a headline analyzer. We use it um, to test different web pages and you can give it, you can give it uh, prompts to say um, in a focus group, which one of these two pages would perform better. And then, it'll come back with some kind of answer like, uh, well, I'm not a focus group, but based on these criteria, we think that content A is better than content B because of it has calls to action or it has local content, it has a map embedded or whatever it is. Um, so you can, you can program in um, what user experience you want to end up with and then have it um, debate itself on which one of those those uh, pieces of content are the best. Image generation we talked about, we're going to give some examples on that, but there's a lot of interesting, uh, interesting results in image generation. Um, the one thing that we're seeing that they're still not very good with 
is hands and fingers. Like uh, they kind of like might have fingers all the way down or, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you're doing pictures of people um, shaking hands, they might, uh, they might have a really long arm or they, you know, might come out a little weird. So image generation, in some cases, you need to refine your prompts and make sure that you get it just right. You can also ask it to modify images too, but um, Carl will get into that in a second. And then video creation, I don't know if you guys have seen those, but you can, can take a still image of yourself um, and then use a text to video software where you can type in whatever words you want it to be. Um, and then it will create a video of that picture of you with your mouth moving and it will say those words. You can even train it to uh, duplicate your voice. If you've seen those deep fakes with the, with Schwarzenegger, uh, in the wizard of Oz and things like that, you, there's uh, there's a lot of, uh, interesting stuff going on with uh, with AI video creation as well. Um, we think that that type of, of rich media is probably going to be um, uh, even more, more robust in the future. Um, so a lot of different types of content that you can create with AI. And anything else on this one, Carl, before I move on to the fun stuff? No, I, I think that's uh, that's good. Just a lot of different content you can put out. Uh, obviously, we're talking SEO today, but uh, you can also be thinking internally, uh, procedures, processes, you know, uh, em employee reviews. Uh, we've used it for personnel issues. Uh, probably the most uh, crazy case that I've used it for is uh, we had to answer a subpoena. Uh, company that uh, had done business or is assumed to have done business with us in the past, but uh, was not a, a customer of ours, uh, was being sued by the government. We got a subpoena wanting us to produce records. Uh, we'd never done business with them, so we had the AI help us craft our response to the subpoena. Uh, and so, you know, you, you can use it for lots of things beyond uh, simple marketing, but, uh, you know, obviously for the, the prospects of today, we're just talking about SEO and, and SEO is going to be more about your content creation, about being found, about being visible, about being the authority in your, in your space. So out of, um, out of all of the things that we're testing, it seems like, uh, the more we can train AI to either combat or or align with uh, Google's AI, the better results we're getting. So um, we we saw some examples of where uh, you know I don't know if you've seen in in Google search results, uh, but if you're part of the uh, the test labs, you're you're seeing that there's AI options in the search results now. Um, so we've been studying those to see what sources they're pulling from because uh google's not uh their their ai search results are not the same as their organic search results so they're looking at different criteria so we've been uh reverse engineering that too looking to see what sources they're pulling from and then make sure that our clients um have some representation on those sources so um, Carl, I'm going to stop sharing now and, and uh, let you get into some examples and case studies of, uh, of AI efforts that we have been putting out there. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. So uh, just to, to piggyback off that, so we started laughing when all this came about. Uh, Jason and I are children of the 80s, so uh, as we were brainstorming, we said, well, it takes a Terminator to deal with a Terminator. So why don't we start training AI to help us figure out how to deal with AI? Um, and so that became kind of the uh, place that we worked on. Uh, so we've been training uh, AI to help us navigate the AI universe. And, uh, you know, Paul, we, uh, you've been one of the first people we've used this with uh, as well. So uh, we'll kind of get into to some use cases. I'm going to give you some best practices, and uh, we'll show you some examples of kind of workflows, how we're we're doing things, and uh, then we'll kind of 
land the plane, get into FAQ time. If you've got questions, we'll we'll try and tackle those for you. Uh, but first of all, let me just kind of start with where we're trying to get to. Just what Jason said, we began to look at uh, Google's AI-assisted search results, and we were comparing those to the traditional search results. And what we were noticing was in markets where uh, we knew who the number one, two, and three rankings were on the traditional search, uh, when we knew who the number one, two, and three on the local search were, mobile search, uh, and then we would trigger the AI search results, we would notice that often number one, two, and three were not number one, two, and three in the AI assisted. Um, and so we began to take a look at what was the cause of that, what was different. Yeah, what we found was that the AI was pulling from back to the, the large language model the AI is pulling not just from Google's information, but it's pulling from the larger universe. LinkedIn, Facebook, BuzzFeed, Quora, Better Business Bureau, uh, different directories, Yellow Pages, Chamber of Commerce. And so a business has to begin to think about its, its overall footprint. But that footprint still follows Google's EAT criteria. So as we were dissecting the footprint, the footprint was always a demonstration of either expertise, uh, experience, authority, or trust. And so we we reverse engineered that and said, okay, so then what we need to, to double down on is creating content that shows a high level of experience, expertise, authority, and trust. And we need to teach AI how to do that. Um, so what we've done is uh, we are now, with our clients, training a GPT on each individual business. Um, so first of all, we train it on the individual business, the business owner, uh, the business owner's uh, existing content, the business owner's biography, the business owner's LinkedIn, uh, then we go to their competition. We train it on all of their competitors. We have it analyze uh, what competitive advantage does our client have over their competitors. And if we're going to create content, what content would be best suited uh, for that client of ours to exploit that competitive advantage? Uh, then we start to look at what are the demographics of the area that we are trying to service or the target audience. Uh, so we look at the demographics, the psychographics, um, what are the felt needs, what are the main concerns, if there are compliance policies we have to deal with. So particularly in the insurance space, uh, we have to upload compliance policies. What can you say? What can't you say? Um, are there terms you can't use? Um, all of that type of information we are training the GPT on. Um, one of the things that we've done on our internal GPT, because I am the uh, promotional force of the company, it's actually trained on my Myers-Briggs and my Enneagram profile, so it matches up to my tone of voice, uh, the way I speak. Um, so it's trained on all the books that I've written, um, every article that I've done, um, it's trained on all of my public speeches. Um, so it, it, it is learned to uh, mirror my own content and my own uh, methodologies and, and way of speaking. So it, it's uh, tone of voice. Is that what you would call that? That's tone of voice. And so from there, uh, once we've trained it on that, uh, then what we start to look at is what is the market looking for? And so I'm gonna give you a couple of, of hacks here that we use. One of the first things that I love to do is I love to go out and I like to look for um, videos that are doing well in the industry that we're looking for. And I have another AI tool called Glass. And all I do is I hit GLASP and GLASP immediately gives me a transcript of that video. And so I'll copy and paste that transcript and I'll come over to ChatGPT and I'll load it in and I'll ask ChatGPT to give me 10 content topics based on that transcript. 
Uh, and so chat GPT will give me those uh, topic lists. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll start to create long form topics. And so just to kind of give you an idea of, of how that's worked for us is uh, those pieces of long form topic. Uh, here's one that we did that exact process on. We posted that April 8th. So today is the 16th, eight days ago. Uh, it's number one on Google. And uh, it's been number one on Google since uh, 48 hours after we posted it. Um, and so we were able to jump ahead of Reddit. Uh, we were able to jump ahead of YouTube. Um, able to jump ahead of House. Um, so we were able to jump ahead of some, some fairly substantial Forbes money, um, fairly substantial players in the market. Um, what we'll do with this, I haven't recorded the video for this. We'll actually record a corresponding video. When we do that, uh, this is another piece of content we did that with using the same process, client engagement techniques for home remodeling businesses. Now, uh, you've got the AI generated information here, and then you get into the organic results. We're number one. Uh, we put that one out March 8th. That one was number one within 48 hours. Um, this is our biggest competitor. He's a friend of mine. So uh, the joke in our agency, uh, in our remodeling vertical, is we don't care where we rank. We just want to rank ahead of him. And so uh, we jumped ahead of him. And uh, we were ahead of LinkedIn, ahead of Reddit. Uh, and then here's our video. So we ranked the video and the uh, the blog post all on the same page. Um, and so we've done that multiple times as well. So what that looks like on, on the big picture, and just to change verticals with you, uh, these are two insurance agents that we beta tested this same process with. So this agent, uh, we kicked in the AI strategy here, and uh, this was the increase in their SEO visibility uh, when we implemented the AI strategy. Uh, this was our second beta test uh, insurance agent. We kicked that strategy in here, and uh, here's where they were coming into April. So uh, made a, a drastic effect on uh, search engine visibility. Uh, we've got a counterpart that uh, has been beta testing his clients alongside of us. And uh, he's been testing the percentage of local uh, search voice uh, of his clients. And on average, that increases 35 to 40%. And what that means is in the local search rankings, uh, what percentage of, of visibility and, and, uh, uh, activity is coming off of that search result. Um, so the AI assistance is is giving a pretty substantial boost. So back to kind of the way we're operating in our, our AI assisted environment, you've got a, a, a choice of tools to work from. Um, GPT is the one we use. Most of all, I think it's going to become the WordPress, if you will, of AI, uh, when you look at, you know, uh, websites, WordPress is kind of the, the go-to. It's highly functional. People can build extra functionalities to it. Um, and and ChatGPT is, is ahead of the game in that. I think they're going to stay ahead of the game. Uh, people are programming great functionalities into it. Um, so it's, it's the tool we, we like to use. And so uh, we'll use this as our foundation. Uh, we'll use perplexity to do our verification of any facts that GPT pulls in. Sometimes we will do a uh, beginning outline with perplexity and then feed it into GPT. Uh, Jim and I will use if we're trying to figure out more of what Google is doing. Uh, now, Jason actually likes Gemini uh, more preferable, I think. I think you tend to use Gemini more than I do. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to lean towards GPT, and it's just, it's just more preference. 
Um, and then for imagery, um, I will use GPT to create the prompt, uh, but then I'll come over to Mid Journey and I'll create the image off of Mid Journey, uh, just because it's a, a better better quality of image. Um, and then you've got Bing's AI, which ties into Chat GPT as well. And so Bing is making a pretty heavy play on the market with their Copilot. Uh, Copilot is now built into uh, their office suite. And so uh, I think you're going to see them make a, a bigger play as well. Uh, so a lot of things that, that you can be doing to move the needle in your SEO. But uh, kind of the way that we want to see you, you structure things is... In your AI, and this is a couple of things that are going to help you in your overall search rankings. Number one, expertise is something that the search engine is looking for. So make sure you've got an author bio set up on all of your content. Uh, so put together your bio, make sure it's got your social media links, make sure it's got what your, your categories of authority are on. So on all of our blogs, uh, Jason and I are the two authority writers. Um, it's got our bio on our content. You want to make that on there. The other thing that I'm going to give you that I think you want to have is a kind of a front runner legally. Um, nobody's talking about this yet, but I, I think in some smart lawyer down here is going to figure out a way to start suing people uh, over content. And so I feel like it's smart to have a, a disclaimer. Uh, if you are working with AI as part of your content strategy. So our disclaimer simply says this, this article is a collaboration between Carl Willis and OpenAI's ChatGPT created on April 2nd, 2024. It combines AI generated draft material with Willis's expert revision and oversight, ensuring accuracy and relevance while addressing any AI limitations. Uh, and we felt like that was a necessary step to take so that the search engine knows that AI was a part of this, the reader knows AI is a part of this, but that there is human research, there is human editing, there is human guidance in this. And, and again, part of what we were testing was, is Google gonna going to... Uh, honor this when we come right out and say AI was used as part of this. And as we're seeing in our, our test cases, we're able to not only rank content, but stick it and stick it long term, um, even in the middle of a core update, when we're coming right out in our content and saying it is a collaboration between AI and, and us. Um, and so Google, Google seems to be just perfectly great with that. Um, so that's where we really see the future of this going is, is enhancing the footprint. So here's the best practice for this AI environment. Uh, you want to create this long form piece of content. Then you want to have your AI create a, a LinkedIn version of your content where that is its own separate unique article but it covers the same topic and you want to link back to this original piece that is on your website. From there, you want to create a social media post on Facebook that links to this article that is on your website. And you also want to create a Google business profile post that links to this post that is also on your website. And then if you're a real go-getter, simply read this blog post on a video and post it to YouTube and you're going to rank this video as well. And that is actually the formula that we are using uh, to make this thing work. There's one other, other thing that we're doing on this page that didn't come up. I remember earlier when I said you can use AI to write code and to, to analyze your technical components for SEO? We're also using AI to write schema markup in the back of these pages. So author schema, we're, we're in addition to the author bio that you see here, 
we're plugging in author schema on the back end of these pages for an additional SEO boost. And AI is writing that too. So I think that's what I've got, Jason. Unless there's, there's anything you would want me to to demonstrate um, here well, on the live. <laughs> I think um, two other things, and these are these are more tips than demonstration, but two things that I picked up on since we've been on this journey. Um, tips about when you're when you're uh, issuing a prompt. I think that. This is where most people get tripped up, is they don't give enough direction in their prompts. So go write an article about this, and then it comes back and it doesn't match what you hoped for. So usually, it's just like talking to an employee. You have to give them specific instructions on what you want this to be. So if they don't know who the target audience is, they don't know if they're in favor of or against a certain topic, um, you know, they, they may come back with something you're not happy with. Um, so, and Carl does this, uh, before you tell it to turn it loose to go write for you, um, instruct the AI to ask any clarifying questions that it needs in order to create the right content. Like it doesn't know, uh, from the initial, the initial prompt whether or not it has all the information it needs or not. Um, it, so you'll, if you ask it to give you any clarifying questions, what other information do you need? Your, your content is going to come back a lot better on the first try. Um, and then the other one about uh, readability and comprehension. So Carl, do you, you, you use that trick, right? Yeah, de definitely do. And, and let, let me just expound on that just a little bit. So if you're if you're not using a custom GPT that you've already trained uh, on your business, your tone of voice, those kinds of things, you have to remember that you know just Chat GPT is pulling from this large universe, and so you want to help it understand better what you're trying to do. So you may want to start that prompt off with, "You are a world class writer, and you are getting ready to write an article." on a blog on this particular topic for this particular company so that it can begin to narrow down its field of reference before it begins to write. And then you wanna give it the parameters of what it's gonna write. You need to write a 2000 word article on this topic, write it at a level of, you know, an eighth grade reading level comprehension. You know, you, you put the parameters in place, but then, the, the golden key is just what Jason said at the very end, at, put this simple, this simple thing in there. What questions do you have to give me the best possible result? And what you'll find is ChatGPT or Perplexity or Gemini will then list out a series of questions for you to clarify. Um, and by doing that, you will get a much better result out of your AI produced content. Then when you're done with that content, here's the second piece you want to do is you want to go back and you want to ask the AI to review its output and to make recommendations to improve that output. And it may ask you some more questions once it reviews the, the output. And uh, when you answer those, it will then improve that content even further. Awesome. And so let me go back. Go back to our back to our presentation. So we um, we talked about the uh, the Terminator versus Terminator and and how we're tackling you know AI facing AI. Um, the big question, and Carl mentioned this earlier, is about the fact that it's AI. We have a disclaimer in there that says that, and and basically all of our Anybody that creates content on our team is getting uh, constant AI training and they've pretty much become researchers and editors um, and they're, they're spending more time on the final product. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? So Google's in the middle of this, this big core update, um, the spam killer content and it's, it's trying to eliminate web spam and is it, um, out to get AI created content. 
Um, the, the fast answer is no, we just showed you AI content that's ranking page one of Google and is outranking a lot of uh, sources that have longer authority than we have. Uh, so it's not that Google is out to eliminate content that is not useful or helpful, um, not authoritative. And some of the things that, you know, that you hear after these Google updates, um, you know, I lost, you know, 40% of my traffic or, you know, what's going on? Um, is it my content? Um, it's probably that uh, you, you, your content probably isn't what's costing you um, the traffic. It's probably the content that you were associated with. Um, so if it's, if it's low quality content and it's linking to you, um, you've got it on your Facebook page, you've got it on your, your LinkedIn page, and it's low quality content, um, Google's just devaluing those links. So it's, it's not really whether it's AI or not, it's about is it, is it high value? So the, the steps that Carl outlined, the thing that he didn't tell you is that there's a bunch of revision steps in there after we get that piece of content back. It needs to be reviewed, revised, customized. So when it says it was created by Carl and AI, um, AI comes back with a draft and then the uh, the human um, edits it and and makes it uh, makes it valuable. So the the kind of the the term that we were kicking around with that one was uh, we're calling it AI squared. So you've got artificial intelligence, but you need to couple it with actual intelligence. So a human needs to oversee all of this, just like any employee can't just turn it loose. Um, and the big thing that's that's coming out of all of the Google updates um, is you're going to hear people talking a lot more about signals. So does your content uh, generate the signals that Google's looking for? So there's three different types that they're looking for. One of them is uh, the, the document generated signals. They call it body signals. So what does the text say? Is it authoritative? Is it relevant? Is it, um, is it, uh, does, does it have all of the characteristics in the body text? Does it reference your stats or does it just put a stat on there without any reference? Um, does it have a bio? Does it have an author bio or was it just generated by the website? So the body signals matter. Um, the web generators generated signals are your anchor signals. Those are the links. So the assumption there is good content, people are going to want to link to it. Bad content, people aren't going to want to link to it. So if you're a, a press release agency or a, a, a news agency, you're not going to want to link to a blog that that is low value, low quality content. So you you would. Uh, you would much rather link to something that's sourced and credible and written by an authority. So if it's good content, it will probably have links pointing at it. If it's not, there won't be any, um, or there will be fewer. And then viewer generated signals is what does the user do? So Google pays attention to what consumers do um, and then they, they log that activity. So there, every every user that visits your content benefits from the experience of the user before. Did they stay on or did they bounce? Did they scroll? Did they click on any engagement objects? Did they uh, did they hover over any words? Um, Google's tracking all of that to find out the value of your content. So content signals. The, uh, the third party link signals and then user generated signals. Are they sharing your stuff? Are they passing it around the web? Um, there must be value there. So this is, uh, this is the, the message that you should take away from this as far as SEO and AI are concerned. Google doesn't care who created the content as long as it's valuable to the people that are looking for that information. So create good content Use, use all the tools available um, and then push it out there and make sure that, uh, that everybody can find it. Um, anything else on this one, Carl, that, uh, that I didn't think of? No, I think we're good there. All right, so <laughs> let's go to the crystal ball. 
what do we think the future of, uh, of AI and SEO is going to be? A um, couple of things that, that I noted. Um, I think that, that it's going to enhance uh, search accuracy. Um, I think, I think it's it's going to get us closer to what we're looking for on the on the first try. We're not going to have to refine our query as often. Uh, people rewording search terms. Um, it's going to uh, be better at producing optimized content. So it's going to know our audience better, and it's going to to get to know their habits and trends and buying cycles. Uh, so it, it will produce. Uh, readily optimized content better and faster. I think it's going to probably um, impact voice search optimization um, with with voice assistants, uh, you know, growing in, in the U.S. I think that AI is probably going to uh, be better at optimizing uh, content for natural language queries. Um, and then... Um, Predictive SEO, meaning that it can forecast future trends and try to get you out in front of there. I think we'll probably get there. I don't think we're there yet, but I think that we will probably get there. Um, and it's going to give businesses the ability to kind of proactively tailor their their SEO strategies based on emerging interests. Um, so I think I think that that those uh, those four things are, are kind of what I had noted in my predictions for the future um carl what do you what do you think any of those wrong or what do you think about them? no I, no I, I think those are are really on target and i i think the other thing you know i would just encourage uh everybody you know who's uh viewing whether you're on with us now or uh you know watching uh the replay uh, i don't think my screen is loaded yet but um uh, if you have access to Google's experimental um, AI search results, pay attention to what those look like. That's going to give you a real view of where uh, AI is is going in search, uh, and perplexity is is also a, a great um, example of where uh, AI is is going in search. Uh, what what's going to really happen is is they are going to give you an answer, not just a list of websites, so you can go find your answer. Uh, what they are going to try and do is is base that answer on who you are, what your habits are, uh, your activities, your browsing habits, um, all of those things, and that's what predictive search has been. Uh, but now it's going to be more than that. It's going to be you know this AI driven. Uh, here's an answer. And then here's some resources you can go look at. And that's what we're seeing in Perplexity. That's what we're seeing in the Bing Copilot. That's what we're seeing in Google's experimental. My, my own prediction is that Google will roll out a Copilot feature uh, mid-year. Uh, because Microsoft's Copilot is popular. Perplexity's Copilot is popular. Uh, so I do believe Google will roll that out mid-year. And then I think the experimental uh, search results we're seeing on Google, we will probably, that will become Google in the next 18 months. Uh, and we've seen some, some landscape uh, variations and what it looks like is it will be ads on top, AI below that. Uh, and we're actually seeing local maps in some cases pushed all the way to the bottom, which is interesting. Um, so that's one we're keeping an eye on. Yeah, tough on mobile, <laughs> but yeah, the maps uh, showing up at the bottom was a was a kind of a surprise. I didn't I didn't see yeah. that one coming, but uh, that's how they do. They're they're always testing. Um, so I think uh, more more to follow with this, but uh, at least I hope that everybody was able to to uh, get some some best practices and some new ideas, and at least learn from things that we've tested that we know work. Uh, and stay away from the things that we know don't work. So hopefully we're, we're uh, saving everybody some time, which is what AI is designed to do. And you got a lot out of this. And I think if there's, uh, do we have any, any, uh, any other questions, Carl, that we were going to try to answer before we wrap it up? No, let's just open it up just to see if we've got any questions from uh, either Mike or Paul. 
No, I'm pretty good. I just everything you've said is kind of resonating with me because I've started with this, I don't know, three or four years ago and they slowly have gotten better. I've slowly learned that you have to be very specific, like you're talking to a child. Yeah. I've seen some very interesting facts made up. I have one uh, beautiful AI. I don't know if you ever heard of them, but they uh, they work on your slide decks for presentations. Beautiful looking slides. They make no sense whatsoever, but they're beautiful. <laughs> I, mean, I would just have to make up some content to go along with it, but the slides are really stunning. And uh, as I started cracking down and being more specific with it, they're getting better, but they're still pulling a lot of old information. They're pulling stuff from like 2022 opposed to 23. So the numbers are way off. Anytime you ask them to put um, words or text into there often comes up as gibberish. This image that we're looking at here of the crystal ball, um, this was created in Leonardo. And the first couple of tries I told it, to put the word SEO and AI in the crystal ball. And it just came up with like just a bunch of letters that didn't spell anything, you know? So that, that's, uh, that's something that I assume that, that we're going to see them improve on. Um, but yeah, you want to check your stats. You want to, you want to check your graphics, make sure that they're uh, like you said, the slides are um, presenting something that, that uh, represents your business well. So uh, keep an eye on it, just like any employee. Um, the the good news is you don't have to worry about hurting their feelings when you tell them you got it wrong. You know, yep. some writers can be finicky, but AI says, "Oh, let me take another shot at it." <laughs> you know, exactly. Now that is a hack. I, I will bring up uh, just because I think it's a valuable hack. Uh, what a lot of people are doing is having uh, Mid Journey or or Dolly or Leonardo create the image. And then they'll go into Canva or Photoshop for the text, yeah. um, and and so you can you can get the the base image because you can get some really amazing images out of those those AI generators. Uh, but then the yeah the text is still kind of a work in progress for sure. Any other questions? No, sounds good. All right. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Hope you got something out of this. And uh, one thing that we know about AI and SEO is it's going to change. So we'll be doing another one of these as uh, as the knowledge base increases, and we'll always be happy to share what we learn. So thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. We really appreciate it. All right, Have a great day.